Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Dan H, and this evening on the project, we're going to talk about all things ZJ header panel. So as you can see here, I got the new ZJ header panel that's got to go in General Grievous. I got what's left of the old header panel that was from the crashed version of General Grievous. And uh, I'm going to show you how to take this apart, how to put it all back together, reassemble it, and get it on the vehicle. First, we got to go on a secret mission. So I've been working on the ZJ a lot lately. Guess what my neighbors got? Their own ZJ. <laughs> I guess the Jeep bug I got, it's contagious. <laughs> That's awesome. Excited to see more Jeep projects in the neighborhood. So, back to the header panel. Here we go. Down to business. Just gonna hold on to this for a second. Gonna move this out of the way. Gonna revisit that header panel in a minute. Uh, first, we're gonna disassemble this. Now, this is the tool that I had to buy specifically for this CJ header panel. Why? Because all my other T, what is this? T25 Torx bits, they plug into here. And unfortunately, this doesn't fit too well in between these lenses. So I got a set of Husky Torx screwdrivers and uh, I'm gonna need to put this in between these lenses and start taking this thing apart. So let's do it. All right, there it is, guys. Right here. Disassemble the ZJ header panel. You gotta first take out these screws. And this is exactly why we needed that tool, because, uh, well, not many things fit in there. You can barely even see it. So, just put that in there. Man, this is really hard to do. I can't see it. The camera's in the way, the flashlight's in the way, the screwdriver's in the way. This is ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Alright, wasn't too bad. <laughs> this screw is like a foot long. Foot long! A foot long! Who's got these a foot long? Good, got it. Okay, <laughs> the easy one's up here. And just gonna remove that. Good. Say I told you it was like a foot long. One lens out. And you remove your pine needles. Next lens. Right up here. All right. Next one is way down in here. All right. Once that other one's out, then this whole unit just slides right out. Ta-da. Lens number two is done. Now the headlight lenses, they just clip in kind of. So you gotta yank them out. I'm gonna try to do it without punching myself in the face and knocking over the camera. It's a lot easier when it's attached to the vehicle. When it's on the Jeep, you can pull and uh, the header panel stays in place. This, I don't know. Got it. <laughs> All right. This headlight, it's in pretty good shape. Now we can start stripping the inside of this header panel. Gonna take off the harness. It's held on by these three. Connectors. There we go. 
There's the driver's side headlight harness. Now we can take out these headlight adjustment devices. <laughs> or whatever they're called. Now you have to reuse these because if you buy an aftermarket header panel online, it won't come with it. At the ditch the sweatshirt. And the sun sets, bakes on the garage, and gets hot in here. I just popped off this clip now. If you ever come across these, definitely save them. Because if your headlight breaks and falls off, it's probably because this part broke. I'm gonna keep all these little pieces. Alright, you're also gonna wanna save these clips in case your new header panel doesn't have them. This piece of molding you might need to reuse. Just kind of glued on. You can slide it right off. Boing. And one more thing. I'm gonna use an adjustable. Let's see if I can get this thing to rotate. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Ooh. Almost overlooked. One more clip. <laughs> Ta-da. All right, so before I go hucking this in the trash, the, uh, the new header panel that I got, I got from uh, Santos parting out his ZJ. Um, these tabs are busted off up here. So I'm going to try to put these tabs on that header panel. Transplant, baby. So let's give it a shot. All right, so the key to a successful transplant is surface area. If I'm gonna epoxy this tab onto the other header panel, I'm gonna wanna save as much surface area as possible to, uh, to make the two together. So, here we go. One. Two. Now this could go in the trash. All right, so for tab number one, I think I'm gonna make a clean cut right here and then grind down these side pieces right there. And then I'll preserve these side pieces here and grind this down on top and I'll mesh it right in. Cool. Now we just gotta make the reverse piece out of this. We'll sit right in here just like that. Just gotta trim a little bit off. All right, so I did a little more off-camera adjusting and this one fits perfect. That is right on the money. All right, I'm gonna go with the epoxy instead of the JB Weld because the setup time is only about an hour instead of uh, four to six hours with JB Weld. So I'm gonna mix some of this up, and get it in place. Brake part's cleaner. Well, I hope that's enough for both sides. <laughs> it's the rest of the tube. Just gonna Stir it up with this part. Why not? Now, I'm a big fan of this Loctite plastic epoxy. 
Uh, I use it a lot on interior parts, especially on the clips that hold the interior of the XJ in place. The metal clips always seem to separate from the plastic trim pieces. So this stuff comes in handy. Now you just gotta make sure you mix it up real good. You wanna have both halves of the epoxy completely blended together. And most of the time when I use the plastic epoxy, I usually hold the pieces in place with masking tape. Masking tape will hold everything where it needs to be and you can peel it back from the plastic epoxy once it's all dried. It comes right off, it doesn't stick to it, and it gives you a nice clean line from where the epoxy was contained. So I'm gonna wrap this tab with the tape to keep the epoxy in place. Then I'm gonna clamp them down to give these things a nice tight fit. All right, we're gonna let this sit up for a while, come back in a couple hours, and I'll catch you on the flip side. I'll catch you on the flip side. All right, so while my new header panel tabs are curing up, I went ahead and I assembled all of my ZJ parts that I collected over the last couple weeks, and I wanna get a set of lenses to put in the header panel. Um, I did run into a small problem. Now, no biggie, nothing, nothing too big at all whatsoever. But if you take a look, you'll notice these uh, these harnesses for the signal lights, well, they are two different bulbs. Uh, some reason, from 1993 to 1996, they used these, and in 97 and 98, they switched to these. They're completely different. So you have to make sure you're getting the right um, harnesses or the right lenses, because this doesn't match up. The 97 and 98 harnesses will not fit in the, the socket holes for the 93 to 96. So that poses a problem for me because my two nicest lenses are going to be mismatched. And I also only have one 3157 uh, bulb. Um, I could mismatch it. It really doesn't matter. Uh, 2357s versus 2157s. But let me show you one thing. This might be good to consider. Take a look at these. And you'll notice this bulb on the 3157s, it's all plastic here. And it just clicks right in really easy. Now, I have ran into problems on older vehicles that have this style socket. The bulbs... The base is metal. They go in and they rotate closed. But if it gets moisture in there, this can seize up on you and you can have the bulb rusted inside the socket. And that kind of becomes a mini nightmare when you're trying to take the bulbs out. The bulbs break, you have to grind out the socket. It, it sucks. But uh, I haven't decided what I want to do yet. I'm thinking of Go into a junkyard, see if I could find a 98 or 97 ZJ and pull in these sockets and lenses, of course, to go with it. Just so if I'm on the beach and I get water in here somehow, I don't want them to rust up. So I'll hit up the junkyard in the morning, and right now I'm just going to assemble some bulbs, plug them in these sockets, and see which bulbs work while it's on General Grievous. Since I put the new battery in, why not? Well, all right, guys, you can see I have great success with the older style bulbs, which is good. I have a matching set if I needed to. Um, I'm going to take a look at the joint guard, though, see if we can find a 98 set of harnesses and lenses, because I do like the fact that you could just pull out the plastic ones and not have to twist metal on metal in that socket. So uh, either way, this is a very viable option. And um, we got headlights, we got signals. So far, so good. I'm going to go to the junkyard, and I'll check back with you in the morning.